If you are an Indian cricket fan, I have three questions for you today. Question number one. When you think Lords, which cricketer do you think of? Ganguly, the shirt-waving century on debut macho? Dravid, the last Indian batsman to get his name on the honours board? Or Dhoni, the last Indian captain to win a test at Lords? Quite possibly all three. And how about a certain Dilip Vengsarkar? Question number two. When you think of Indian cricket in the 70s and the 80s, which cricketer comes to your mind? Gavaskar, the prodigy turned greatest batsman of his era? Kapil Dev, the greatest Indian all-rounder? The spin trio of Prasanna Bedi and Venkat Raghavan? Surely all of these greats, right? But guess who was India's top scorer in tests through the 1980s? A guy called Vengsarkar. Now question number three. When you think about the greatest selection moves in Indian cricket, which cricketer comes to mind? Ganguly blooding in Sevag and Yuvraj at the turn of the millennium? Kiran More backing fellow stumper MS Dhoni? Or Jaspreet Bumrah's selection to tests with little first class experience? And then of course there's Vengsaka's selection of a 19 year old Virat Kohli. Think about it. This is Rahul Kargal with Kislea and in this podcast we showcase Dilip Vengsarkar. Now Vengsarkar scored 6,868 runs for India and finished with a test average of 42.13. That's over 2,000 runs, more than Mohinder Amarnath who incidentally played tests for four more years than Vengsarkar did and scored over 3,000 more runs than the current Indian coach Ravi Shastri. Yet, where Amarnath and Shastri have had careers as experts in cricket media and coaching, as have Navjot Sidhu, Chetan Sharma, the mighty Sunil Gavaskar and Kapil Dev, Vengsarkar's second life after years of wilderness came as the chairman of selectors in 2006, a tenure that lasted less than two years. Also, it was Vengsarkar and not Gavaskar who was the top Indian run-getter in test cricket through the 80s. Venk Sarkar was a poster boy for the team, the Lord of Lords, the batsman with centuries in three consecutive Lords tests and the hero of India's 1986 triumph. Venk Sarkar averaged 72.57 at Lords and starred on India's victorious 1986 tour, where he averaged 90 with the bat, scoring 360 runs with three centuries. Lovely shot. 99. Now the men can come in. Five men saving the single. There it is. Tip and run. Then Saka has made another hundred. And despite such accolades, Vengsarkar is often relegated in the annals of history. Could it be due to matters other than his cricketing acumen? Possibly. Now Vengsarkar earned the moniker Colonel during his time and it could have been due to his free-spirited nature and unbashed way of speaking his mind. Quite a few instances come to mind. In 1982, India played Pakistan in an unofficial series at Sharjah. Sunil Gavaskar's 11 versus Intikab Alam's 11. When the flight-carrying Indian cricketers, who coincidentally shared the plane with some film stars, landed in Dubai, the film stars were allowed to jump the queue by the airport authorities. Now, while the other cricketers did not make much noise, this transgression did not please Venk Sarkar who expressed his displeasure publicly. The customs officer at the airport did not like it and Bengsaka was denied entry into the UAE for making a nasty remark in a local dialect. He was deported back to India. What Bengsaka said is not known but it was surprising that none of the players, Gavaskar included, stood up for their comrade. In 1989, the Indian players and the BCCI were face to face and locked in a legal battle after the board fined and suspended 12 players, Vengsarkar included, 
for participating in a series in the USA and Canada without the board's authorization. Six players, Kapil Dev Vengsakar, Ravi Shastri, Azaruddin Kiran More and Arun Lal were all banned for a year. The players took the BCCI to court and after the Supreme Court's rap on the wrists, the board resigned at the ban and reached an agreement with the players. Wang Sarkar, who was banned for six months in 1987 for writing newspaper articles while still an active member of the team, was presumably hurt. He was the Indian captain of that rebel tour and along with Kapil Dev led the players riposte. This affair earned the players some bad blood with the then dispensation and Wang Sarkar's career was never the same. He retired altogether three years later. Four of the six who were banned returned to mainstream cricket affairs soon after their retirement in various roles. Shastri was a commentator until recently, Arun Lal did commentary before his unfortunate tryst with cancer and Kiran More served at the BCCI in various roles. Kapil Dev was India's coach for a while before inviting the board's ire with the ICL. Meanwhile, Azhar was banned for life for fixing, but he currently serves as president of the Hyderabad Cricketing Association after clearing his name to a certain extent via a lengthy judicial battle. Only Veng Saka remained in the wilderness. A stint as the chief selector came his way in 2006 and Veng Saka had to stave off opposition from Captain Dhoni and BCCI's N Srinivasan to select a 19-year-old Virat Kohli in the Indian team in 2008. The move was to draw the ire of Srinivasan, who was enraged at Veng Sarkar's sidestepping Tamil Nadu cricketer S. Badrinath in favour of Virat Kohli for the Sri Lanka ODI series in 2008. A confrontation between Veng Sarkar and Srinivasan ensued and only days later, the former lost his job as a selector. Veng Sarkar said quite famously and I quote, selecting Virat Kohli cost me my job. One wonders if the selection episode was the worst of it all. Veng Sarkar was the number one batsman in the world when the rankings were first introduced in 1987. The man he selected is the current India captain was number one in the rankings until recently and is one of the leading batsmen of his era. And not surprisingly, he is way more popular than Veng Sarkar ever was. But when the dust settles, there will only be one kernel in Indian cricket. Dilip Veng Sarkar